Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I'm back home now, just finished up the fifth stop of the Major League Fishing Invitational at the Potomac River. Had a very good first day. We were sitting in 20th place with 15 pounds, 11 ounces, I believe. Uh, followed it up with a tough day too. We ended up with 10 pounds, 15 ounces, Dropped me from 20th place to 62nd place. We missed the day three top 50 cut, which was really a bummer because I had set myself up in good position. The reality of it was that the weights were really good. They were really stacked. It took about, uh, what was it? About 13 and a half pounds a day to make it to the top 50. My two day average was a little bit short of that, about, about a half pound short. So I was one good bite away, you know, day two, if you've watched my, my recaps on day one, I had five fish that were all roughly three, slightly over three pounds, slightly under three pounds. And on day two, I just couldn't get the bites and I caught a lot of small fish. In fact, my limit, which I didn't have till about 1.30, uh, the first limit I had weighed roughly seven pounds. Uh, you know, I kept it together. I fished hard. I had a couple of really good low water spots, uh, low tide spots that I was able to cull pretty much all of that out in the last hour, hour and a half, get up to 11 pounds. But I just never had those big bites the, throughout practice as well as the first day of the tournament. It seemed like when I caught a fish or when I shook a fish off, it was generally a two and a quarter, two and a half pound class fish or bigger. And that never happened on day three. I never had a shot at a big bite. Uh, you know, I don't, I never lost any that I really knew at least that I saw that, uh, I thought were good. You know, the reality, reality of it is it's a disappointment. I left a lot of points on the table. The reality at this point is that I'm still sitting in pretty good shape. You know, I'm in fifth place overall in the AOI point standings. We've got one event left. I've got an outside shot at the angler of the year title. If I have a fantastic tournament, and I've got a 78 put point cushion over eighth place. So if I can finish in the top 78, I'm locked in for the BPT next year. Uh, it sounds like an easy task, definitely not, but I'm confident going to the Mississippi River that I should be able to lock that up. So let's talk a little bit about the baits that I use. That's what I wanna do here to kind of walk you through it. You know, the Potomac River is an extremely diverse fishery. You can fish grass, you can fish hard targets, you can fish uh, shallow, you can fish deeper. I chose to fish shallow. I fit pretty much concentrated around grass and lily pads the entire time. And because of that, that's what my bait choices resulted around. Now, I did not find many fish out on flats. Most of my fish were relating to shoreline or cover targets. And because of that, I kind of didn't concentrate at all in the tournament on using moving baits like swim jigs or chatter baits. Uh, I really concentrated on kind of more traditional Potomac River standby baits. You know, what I caught most of my fish on was this guy right here. This is a wacky rigged Berkeley Maxent, the general five inch in green pumpkin. Now I will say I threw green pumpkin and I threw a purple color color just depending on water clarity. When you have the tide coming in and the tide going out, generally speaking, you have a lot of uh, variation in water color. When the tide was coming out, it was sucking clear water out of the backs of the, the areas I was fishing. Water would clear up, I'd throw green pumpkin. On an incoming tide, it was bringing dirtier main river water into those areas. The water was off colored and I was throwing a purple color. And I did the same with my flipping gear, but this was, the workhorse for me, I caught the majority of my fish uh, on a wacky rig, either around isolated pieces of cover like laydowns or duck blinds or edges of lily pads. Um, and then if I wanted to get a little bit more into the cover and just to walk through, because I know everyone's interested. So I threw a, this is a wacky rig decoy hook. I don't know the full name. I'll put the link in the video description for you with all of these so that you can check them out. Uh, to 10 pound, this is just Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader. And then I had a, a 10 pound Berkeley X9 braided main, uh, main line. And that was rigged with a MHX NSJ 872, two power, 
It's a uh, light medium action rod, I would say. Uh, it's a 7.3 blank. So that was, that was what I caught the majority of my fish on. After that, I really started, uh, I, would, I would throw a lot of pitching baits. Now, the pitching baits, I did the same thing from a color standpoint. The bait of choice was a three inch Berkeley Pit Boss. I went with a smaller size because of all the pressure that was in the area. I felt like a smaller size would really, you know, potentially give me a shot at a few extra bites. Uh, I threw a black and blue in the muddier water. In the clear water, I threw the green pumpkin color. This basically just came down to uh, any thicker cover. So in the areas I was fishing, there definitely were some scatter dock pads. So they're thicker, bigger, bulkier pads that I was, I was getting some bites pitching into that. There was some milfoil that was topped out that I was pitching into. And then there was also a lot of cut up uh, debris, floating weeds that other people were cutting up. There was a lot of hydrilla in the area. So you'd get a lot of floating weed mats that would float up into the pads or float up against the bank. And when I came to that, I would pitch a small pit boss into that. Uh, I did throw it on a couple of different combos with a bunch of different weights. Uh, my standard was just a quarter ounce, just a smaller, lighter weight to pitch into, say, around the pads where there wasn't anything preventing the bait from getting down into it. If I was fishing some of that topped out milfoil, I had one rigged up with three quarter ounce weight to be able to punch through it. So the variation just depended on the cover I was fishing. I also had one rigged up on straight fluorocarbon. Now this is a straight braid. This is 50 pound braid. I also had a one rigged up on just straight fluorocarbon for fishing uh, a lot lighter cover in that really clear water areas. Uh, that was 15 pound fluorocarbon, but I had three rods. I had three rods rigged up with a max scent the general and i had three rods rigged up with a small three inch pit boss now i did also catch a couple of keeper fish on a frog this guy right here this is a spro poppin frog in the killer gill color uh this was just for when i came across some of those topped out areas of milfoil if i had an area where maybe i had some of that floating weed that floated up against the grass was it generally able to get a couple of bites a day throughout practice and day one on it? On day two of the tournament, never got a bite on it, which is unfortunate because generally when I did get a bite, it was a good quality fish, but it did not happen on day two. Uh, this I was just fishing on 60 pound uh, Berkeley X5 braided line. I also then, so a lot of times what I would see throughout the day is there'd be a fish chasing some schooling uh, minnows. A lot of times on your low tide or a falling tide or a rising tide, if you were on the edge of some of the pad lines or some of the uh, different grass flats, there were a lot of balls of minnows. And in practice, I saw a lot of fish chasing. The only bait I could get them to eat on a consistent basis was a little hover shot. So this is the 364th ounce hover shot. And then I've got it here with the Jackal Rhythm Wag, little uh, split tail jerk shad type soft bait. Uh, it worked great. If I, when the fish came up chasing, I was, I would say I would catch two out of three times when I saw it on this little guy. It was the only bait I was able to get them to bite in practice or in the tournament. Now, Generally speaking, those were smaller fish, but they were still keeper sized fish. So when I did catch them on that, I ended up calling them out. So I did not weigh any specifically on that, but it was a really good bait to have handy so that when I saw one chasing, I could fire that in there and have confidence to get bit. So that was it. You know, I probably had another five or six rods on the deck, uh, a popper, a buzz bait, a jig. I still had the swim jig, still had a chatter bait. Those were all more for one-off casts here and there that generally by the end of the tournament or by the tournament, they were more out almost for comfort. I didn't throw half of them, but uh, I do tend to like to have a rod out to make one or two casts with throughout the day versus not having it on the deck because I can get a little lazy in the boat with respect to the rods. If it's in the, it could be rigged and in the rod compartment. And if I see a one cast deal where I want to make one cast with a buzz bait, if it's not on the deck, I'm not pulling it out of the rod box. So I like to have them out, but these were the baits that, that really caught everything for me. It was a pit boss, a general, a hover rig, and a frog. Every weigh-in fish I had was on that. 
Uh, if you have any questions, guys, let me know in the comment section. I am mentally moved on from the Potomac River to La Crosse. Already starting to think quite a bit about it. Uh, it's a big tournament for me. It's probably the biggest tournament I've ever fished in my career in terms of the importance. I have fished lots of Forest Wood Cups, lots of championships, lots of big tournaments. This is the one that clearly, in my opinion, has the most impact on having a good performance. So hopefully we can get that done. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for your continued support. We uh, will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thanks for watching.